that's really cool to hear because that's what human factors, uh, you know, organizational, uh, industrial organizational psychologists all have that kind of role. So, yeah. all right, let's get to those two questions. Sure. All right. So the first one that we had was describe how this company has become successful in supporting their employees through the work environment. Um, so I, again, I, I go back to ERGs, man. Like that's that's one of the most tangible examples uh, that we have. So again, it's just this dedi these dedicated uh, groups that you can join if you are affiliated. Um, so I, I listed off, I rattled off a bunch of the major ones. So women at um, women at black at Latin at veterans at pride at are a few, uh, and all of them have subsidiary groups. But I'll throw another one at you uh, that we just had this past week. Uh, that really like I remember when I, I had just joined Facebook around the time where this event happened I was like oh man like this is it so all the major groups that I just mentioned have what's called a leadership day so Black Ad Leadership Day uh, had started the year that I started at Facebook 2016 uh, and this is a day where all the black employees across the company get to fly to headquarters for like two days of programming all paid for to buy the company hotel paid for food paid for catering paid for everything's paid for um and then you get to all your uh usually there's a guest speaker so uh, i can't remember who the guest speaker was the first year but we definitely had folks like viola davis come in and speak um uh and it's just it's a phenomenal day of getting to connect uh with people who look like you especially if you are in an underserved group uh like like latin ad or black ad um our numbers from a diversity perspective are relatively low in tech let alone facebook so getting to bring all the black employees um from around the world literally so i got good friends that, that are black that live in singapore i got a fraternity brother that lives in japan uh i know a lot of folks in dublin and in the london office and so you get to see these people that you wouldn't see outside of vc uh, or email in person and everybody's black <laughs> which is so so dope um, and so it's just this, it's this warming feel. And I was like, wow, like they care that much that they would put money to let everybody fly. Like it's, it's very costly just as a headline to fly from London to California, let alone business class. Um, so to get the opportunity to do that and all investing in your people, I was like, oh man, that's all I needed to see. And that's just black at all the major ERGs get to do that. Um, uh, the other cool thing that I will add on to this concept of ERGs is uh, we encourage allies to join as well. So I'm an ally of Women At. So Women At in Austin meets every month. I attend their monthly meetings. Uh, and it allows me to sit in and listen and understand the journey of women in the workplace as well, which is very different than the journey for men. Um, and so given that we invest in all groups and allyship is important, like we are encouraged to go uh, to our respective um groups of interest and like just be there for support. And it, it, it's, uh, it's enriching for me as well, because uh, ironically, when I started in my first team, 60% um, of my team was women. So I had five direct reports. So three out of five of them were women. And because of everything that I was sitting and learning in women, that I was able to apply that in terms of like understanding their truth um, and understanding that all women's truths are different, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, but again, I was prepared for that because of what women that offer for me as an ally. So um, that is definitely um, uh, some, just some more facets of what ERGs look like in practice for us. That's very, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, Cause it's some of the talk behind um, the, the pandemic is that women um, lo losing women out of the workplace because of, of some of that, that uh, the demands of uh, raising kids, managing right. household so there will be really interesting to see even from a psychological point of view to see how that that plays out in in the in the future now you talked about ergs is there any other aspects beyond the uh ergs that mm -hmm. uh, kind of tie into this you know ideal kind of uh workplace we we, we talked about uh the workplace itself um mm -hmm. having these kind of specialized um interest groups is there right. any other aspect of Facebook that you could speak to? Absolutely. So another favorite resource that we have for me is uh, mental, mental health support. So we have, there's a company called Lyra that allows us um, to get free mental health uh, consultation for us and our families, right? So I was able to get a therapist for the first time in my life in March, which was really cool. Uh, we've got like, you get 25 free sessions. 
uh, and it's extended to your family as well. So my wife uses a therapist through Lyra, through my company benefits. Um, and I'll zoom out and I'll talk about what that means from a workplace perspective and a cultural perspective. So uh, as you and I know, um, mental health in the black community is a very challenging topic. And a lot of it stems from uh, our affiliation to the church and what the church means in the black community. So if you are going through something, people say, hey, just pray on it, it'll be okay. Like, make sure you tithe, are you going to church enough? But the truth is like, we are, we are people. Um, and prayer does help, but a little extra help helps too. Um, however, there are a lot of barriers around um, there's cultural barriers, but then also financial barriers to mental, mental health services as well. And so um, the minute you become an employee, you get access to Lira benefits. And so, um, and, and now let's multiply that with COVID too, right? So like you're in home and at the house all day, <laughs> working, not getting to connect with people. Exactly. Uh, and that, that's a toll. And so from a management standpoint, we've definitely, I remember when COVID first started, uh, we talked as a leadership team within my org and said, and one of my directors said, hey, like, make sure you guys remind your team that the Lira benefit is there for them to use. Um, and so um, now switching over to the workplace perspective, we, we very much are what we call a high performance organization, which in practice means everybody like is giving their best at all times. Everybody wants the next promotion. They want the pro next promotion tomorrow. You want the best ratings. Uh, and as a byproduct of that, like people are always finding the next thing. Can I get another project? Can I do a bit more work? So it is very, uh, it is not very common for people to just find the easy way out at Facebook. Everybody's looking at the, the next way that they can give impact. But the challenge with that is if you can get really burned out. Um, also keep in mind, we are like, one of the biggest social media platforms in the world. And so you might work at Facebook or Instagram. And then when you get off of work, you back on Instagram again or Facebook again. So you're in this perpetual state of work all times if you can't find a balance. Uh, and so I think the mental health services are especially important uh, for teams if you're working on like um, platform risk or if you're looking uh, at community engagement or behavior and people are doing malicious things on the platform, uh, like abuse or um, suicides or things of that nature, that takes a toll on you. And so I'm grateful, and, and that's a very extreme case, but I'm grateful that we have in this high performance organization, we have this mental health service where you can kind of, you can jump out for a sec, like talk about what you're going through at work or beyond, get refueled and then jump back in, so. Uh, Lyra is definitely a benefit. I really, really That's appreciate. excellent. And I'm glad you uh, brought that up. Um, you know, one, because we're a psychology class too. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so very important to have that support. And especially now, I mean, it, the support needed to be there anyway. And I, a lot of times companies do have what they call employee assistance programs. Um, but, but it's even beyond employee assistance programs in terms of uh, uh, mental health support. Like right. it sounds like what Facebook is doing. And That's I think an excellent point you make between Facebook and Instagram um, being social media platforms and working at a major social media platform and then having your own social media plat yeah. uh, social media accounts as well and learning how to balance that or um, knowing when to kind of shut off shut it off or take a break. I think that's really really great. Um, it's tough. It is oh, tough, okay. uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> Because I know social media has kept me in touch with uh, a lot of people yeah. that I can't see face to face. So mm -hmm. it is it's a balance and it's a part of our new, you know, our new normal uh, and moving forward. So yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting, I say. So let's talk about a little bit about the question. The second question you wanted to address is, as well. So, yes, yeah, so our second question was explain why the company is considered an ideal employer. Um, there's a lot of components to this, Leanne, but um, I'll, I'll check off a few that come top of mind for me. Um, one is, I think, I, I always use the term, we create the wave. And what I mean by that is we have innovated the future of work in a lot of different ways, right? So um, we are in the social media space that is really nascent if you think about the history of social media. And we are the dominant player in that space. And I think it's exciting, especially as a, as a millennial, uh, based on my age, uh, to be a part of a company that's building what the future is, right? So like Facebook is just as common as Kleenex, right? Um, and 
while being a in a, while being in this nascent space, we are innovating at the same time, right? So you have Facebook. Uh, we bought Instagram. Uh, I think we already own Messenger already. We have WhatsApp. We acquire WhatsApp. We acquire Oculus, which is AR VR. So we we own this white space and continue to define the future. So I think that definitely makes us attractive. It's another reason why I think people love Tesla so much is because they are about to create the future of automotive, right? Uh, so that's one component of what I believe makes us ideal. Um, the second uh, thing that I think makes us ideal is some of the benefits that I talked about earlier. So we talked about ERGs. Pay is like pretty good. <laughs> um, we have benefits around transportation. So in Austin alone, just to make it tangible for you, uh, we have free transportation on the bus systems. Uh, if I want to use that, they just launched a shuttle system that has like a number of different stops in the city. So if I don't want to take the bus, I can take Facebook specific shuttles that get me to work back and forth every day. Um, again, all of that is paid for. We get free breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single work day. This is when we were in the office. Uh, but think about how that affects um, you needing to cook dinner every day, right? Um, when I go into the office, I don't have to think about, oh man, what am I going to eat for lunch? Everything's already prepared for, for already, and I don't have to pay for it out of my paycheck. 